I was on a business trip thousands of miles away from you know, our home here in Hawaii when I got a text that changed my life forever. And the text communicated that my entire family would be dead in a matter of moments. And I remember when I received that text, I had just come off a high from a very important, very cool business meeting in my friend's living room in Nashville. And I'm like, this can't be real. And I called my family, and my family didn't answer. I called my wife, Natalie, I called my son, Raleigh Carden and Lincoln. Eventually, my 13-year-old son at the time, Carden, answered the phone. And I'm sorry, Carden, but uh, he was he was balling. And he said his goodbyes. And he said, I love you, Dad. And I still couldn't grasp that it was real. Now, those of you who live here in Hawaii, you may know what I'm talking about. This is what the text said. And at the time, this was very real. We can laugh about it now. Exact words. Ballistic missile threat to Hawaii. There's a ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter and wait for future information. This is not a test. Who remembers that? That was real. It wasn't real, but it was real. There are people jumping into mantles, as reported, to survive. And after we found out that North Korea wasn't actually going to blow us up in the moment, there was an actual market for people trying to buy pills for the fallout from a nuclear bomb. At the time, it was real. After the fact, it's something to laugh at, but not to be chill about. And what I realized is, why did it take a time bomb to make us realize the value of time? And I'm not a stranger to tragedy. It was interesting because in the moment, I thought, not only is my family going to be gone, my, my home's going to be gone, the island might be gone. There's literally nothing to go back to. Like, it's, it's over. But I also remember thinking, I'm glad we live without regrets. Temp. When you think of the word temp, what do you think of? Maybe temporary, maybe tempo. Tempest. Justin Timberlake. I'm just joking. That's just me. I just knew about Justin Thompson. But when you really think about time, look what people do. Instead of telling me all the successful ways you could properly manage your time, I'm going to take a moment to share with you how to destroy your life by mismanaging your time. And then share some guiding principles so that whatever your dreams are, you can live a life without regret. This is classic performance, success, literature. You have a goal. You will take a number of steps to reach that goal. Let's say it's 10. You walk 10 steps, and on the 11th step, you've reached the goal. Although, if you consider that in a matter of times, when I talk with people, they'll tell me they have a goal, and they'll say it'll take five years to reach that goal. I go, that's a fantastic goal. But didn't you just tell me you want to have more time with your children? Aren't your, isn't your son 13 years old? Won't he be out of the house by the time he's 18? Wasn't that a mismanagement of time while you pursued your goal? There's a very distinct difference between a goal and a decision. A goal is out there somewhere, maybe I'll do it. A decision is I'll do it now. For example, everyone says they want to write a book. It's a great goal they will never accomplish. The moment you decide to write a book, you write it. And so I would propose, as opposed to time management, I would hope you would consider this idea of anti-time management. 
And I'll get there in a second. Instead of linear thinking, think more laterally. Instead of lateral thinking, think more circular. Instead of circular thinking, think time-centered. A time-centered approach to what you want to do somehow has the ability to create a life you want, not just five years in the future, but right now. Let me use a metaphor, and then I'll give an example. Let's say that you metaphorically wanted to live in a castle. Most people will say, I want to live in a castle, but I will begin with the moat. The castle is the dream, the moat is the work, and they never get out of the work to live the dream. They work on the moat at the expense of the dream when they could have just started with the castle. No one's trying to kill you. No one's trying to harm you. This, these things that we put in our heads, as far as time management is concerned, started decades and decades and decades ago with modern time management. Modern time managers, when I say modern, I'm actually talking about the 20th century, not like today. They started saying, I'm going I'm to fast forward one second. We approach our personal lives and our goals using the philosophies from business of time management. And then we wonder why we don't have any time. Have you ever made a checklist or a calendar or tried to do all these things that those certain goals you've been planning on for years never actually actualize? This is because time management for business was never intended to be for your personal benefit. Time management for business was designed intentionally to squeeze every hour, every moment, every second of energy out of you by the hour to get a desired output for the business. But we wrongly apply that to our personal lives when we're trying to have more freedom. One is literally meant not to give you personal freedom. The other is. I call it time tipping. The idea of time tipping is a time-centered approach. It's a value system and it's a methodology to be able to create an abundance of time. I'll give you an example. A lot of the people I talk to, especially in this time, the world where we are now, where much of our work is being outsourced, where there's freelancers everywhere, where you can do anything online, where you can live anywhere, and create the same kind of output as you would inside of an office. This is a new age. They'll say something about, I want to create a business where I can finally have more freedom of time to be able to travel with my family, for example, and do whatever I want to do, whenever I want, whatever I want. And then once they get down that road, you can imagine where I'm going, they end up having less time. Less time with their family, they're spending more time in a new venture. So a time-centered approach as for that as an example would be something like this. Instead of saying, I'm going to build a business or whatever your project might be, and eventually five years later have the success that I desire, just start with the success. If you want to have a life where you're living on the road with your family traveling the world, go live on the road and travel with your family. You don't have enough time to not do that. And then you build a business around that to support your time-centered goals. You collapse time by years by doing this. And I've seen this time and time and time. Again, in my own life and in others. Let's just do an exercise. Imagine for a moment whatever the dream is that you have in your head. Imagine that you're telling yourself you have all these steps to do, and then instantly ask, what would I do if I didn't have to do all those steps? This is a brain exercise. And what happens in the brain is that when you, when you leave an open spot or an open place, it wants to close that gap. And so you're able to find solutions to say, well, what if I didn't have to do all those things, and what if I could just do it? You know, 
I met a widow billionaire who told me her husband was not a good family man because he had no time for the family. And yet we think that money will solve all our problems. I met a venture capitalist, multi, multi, multi millionaire, who said money is easy, time is hard. I met an investment banker in his 40s when I was in my 20s who told me, I wish I could get back the life that you have now. In fact, for the last 20 years, I've been working to get that life back that I used to have in my 20s today. So these thoughts of time and the idea that we have to do certain steps to be able to get there, in many cases, just simply isn't true. What you have to do is tip time. And by tipping time, you essentially step into your future role and build a business model or a structure or a system to support what you're doing right now. Somebody recently went to me and asked, Richie, I don't know what to do. I have all these goals, I don't know what to do. And I replied, decide who you want to be and you'll know what to do. So the moment you know who you want to be and you can act from that future self, the steps fall into place. And what you eventually realize is there are no steps. So I would submit get family and people and relationships are important to you. Don't fool yourself into thinking that going to work is giving them the time that you want to give them. Because it's literally not. But also, don't fool yourself into thinking that you can't create work that would. There's an acronym I created for the word time. And this is what I want to end with. Time. T-I-M-E. Today is my everything. If you choose to think beyond the walls you put in front of yourself and just say, what if those weren't there? What if I could do it now? And what if I could build a supporting system around me to tip time? You will collapse time. And what you'll really find is, let's say the thing you want to do doesn't work. I've done hundreds of interviews with people approaching retirement. And they all said, the ones that said they weren't successful or they were less successful, they all said something like this. I thought I needed more time, more education, and more money. I thought I needed more experience to do what I really wanted to do, only to find out that I still need more time, more education, more money, and more experience to do it. Stephen M. R. Covey, the son of Stephen Covey, he invited me to his office one day and I was in my 20s, and he asked me to work for him. He asked me to teach executives. And I said, what will the gray hairs think? That was the first thing I thought. I'm too young. And he said this, Richie, people say they have 20 years of experience, when in reality, they only have one year's experience repeated 20 times. Don't let that be you. If your life is on repeat, you're a broken record. There is a purpose in repetition, but there is a creative space out there for you where the more newness you can experience, the more you can collapse time, the more you can actually fail at something and realize, I'm glad that didn't work out because if I would have waited 40 years to do that thing, it would have been a really hard fall. So that now you can learn if it works or not, you can move forward, or you can do something different. And in that way, you can actually live multiple, multi dimensional, polymath like lives. Time. Today is my everything. And that's an idea worth spreading. Thank you.